the Your Safe Space podcast is recorded on Wurundjeri land. This podcast acknowledges the traditional owners and custodians of the land. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to Your Safe Space, the podcast. I'm your host, Adele Marie, and this podcast is here for you. It is a safe space for us to catch up each week to discuss anything and everything. And on today's show, we are back with an Ask Me Anything, which means AMA on air. And these episodes are my favorite to bring to you. And I'm so excited because I think this is the last AMA episode before I come back for season two of the podcast. And so we've got one more episode coming, I believe, on Sunday. Then there'll be a bit of a break. I'll give you a bit of a housekeeping and final update in that episode and then I'll come back for season two, which I can't wait. And I think at the time of this episode coming out, I might be in Lisbon. I'm going to say I'm in Lisbon and then I'll be heading home in a few days. So can't wait to be back in your ears in real time. And thank you so much for your support while I've been away. But as always, these episodes are my favorite. They are short, sharp, juicy, not a replacement for professional mental health help or support. And if you do need that, please check the show notes, but we're diving straight in with question number one today. How do you go about meeting your partner's family? I am so incredibly nervous and how excited for this listener. I think it's so cute and so cool that you're at this stage and I know it can feel so scary and overwhelming, but I do think it is a really cool chapter and stage to be at with your partner. Now, it's totally normal to be nervous as well. No one really prepares you for this. And I think it's so daunting because obviously you want your partner's family to love you. (laughs) You want your partner's family to accept you and approve of you. And so it can be quite overwhelming. And while it is scary and overwhelming, I think it's also really exciting and you should be happy that you are also at this point as well. Now, I think with some preparation and with some fake it till you make it, you can go into this with a bit of confidence. And I also just want you to know that most families are very understanding and most families may even be like nervous to meet you and maybe understanding of the nerves. So take a bit of a breather. It's going to be all right. I'm going to give you some tips and you're going to nail it. Okay. So the first thing that I want you to do is to prepare beforehand. And so chat to your partner. I'm not too sure how much prep you've done, but chat to your partner, know their names, know the key details about each of the family members, know who you're going to meet, know about their interests. Maybe you can have a couple of things kept in the back of your mind to maybe ask them or talk to them about and ask your partner to tell you kind of anything you need to know. I think this preparation eases the nerves because then you go in not as blind. Secondly, plan a cute outfit and I say cute, but what I really mean is something that you feel comfortable in, something that is still you and something that you feel your best in. Because when you feel like yourself and you feel good, you're more likely to come across as confident and sure of yourself. And it's so important that you actually do feel comfortable and so important that you do feel like you can be yourself because that is how you shine. The next tip is to take something along with you. Now, I used to do this whenever I was meeting any of my ex's parents, but can you take a little token of appreciation or maybe a small gift just to say thank you for the invite or thank you for having me, especially if it's like a dinner or a lunch or maybe it's someone's birthday. Some things I've taken in the past have included desserts. I love taking desserts. I almost prefer taking desserts as opposed to taking alcohol because not everybody drinks and I don't know, I don't really drink. So I'm like, I don't really know if I want to take a bottle of wine, but that's also a really easy gift to take. In the past, I've also even taken some chili oil that I've made. A homemade gift goes down a treat and chili oil is super easy to make. Obviously, you've got to know that they like spice to gift them that. And if they don't like spice, the other thing I've taken in the past is like a really nice infused olive oil. And I'm pretty sure it's because of my Italian heritage that I think that's a good gift idea. (laughs) And some people listening are going to be like, why is she taking olive oil to her ex's parents' house? But it can be a really cute gift and it can just show them like you put a bit of effort in, you put a bit of thought into it. And people always appreciate when you have thought about them a little bit extra. Now, as for the actual conversation, so you're there, you're, you're in the moment, right? As for the conversation, I think there are a couple things that you can do to kind of ease the conversation and just come across and appear very confident in yourself. And so obviously basic stuff, be respectful, 
be kind, say hello, give them eye contact, smile at them. You are, you are already going to do that anyway. You don't need me to tell you that. But I would also love for you to ask them questions and listen to what they're saying so that you can practice that active listening that I've spoken about as well on this podcast. And maybe there are also things that your partner has mentioned during the preparation that you can then be prompted to ask them about or follow up with about. And that just then shows that you're taking genuine interest and shows that you've paid attention and that you're keen to hear more and actually keen to care and to be involved in their life. Obviously, shoulders back, eye contact, slow your breathing down. That will help you while you're having the combo too. And then very lastly, be yourself. This is my overarching advice because you are you and you are so special and your partner has chosen you for a reason. Your partner loves you for a reason. So if your partner is at this point where they want to introduce you to your family, that's a pretty good sign in my eyes. And so you as you are is all you need to be. Okay, so relax and enjoy it. Don't put on a show. Don't pretend to be someone you're not. That's not a facade that you then want to have to carry and try to uphold moving forward either. So just be you and know that it will be okay. And then obviously on your way out, thank them, tell them you had a great time, even tell your partner once you either get back to somewhere privately with your partner or the next time you see your partner, thank them for inviting you and introducing you to their family and debrief about it together. See how it went, see what your partner says. And I'm sure that it will be a good time, but good luck. I don't know if anyone has any tips in the Facebook group, but you're welcome to start a thread and people can also provide some support to you there if you need. Okay. Question number two is I'm feeling lonely at the end of year 12. Do you have any advice? And yes, I do because I feel this and it's been a long time since I was in year 12, but Feeling lonely at the end of year 12 is super common. And the reason for this is you are going through one of the biggest transition periods of your life. And I don't know how much support is provided. I feel like back when I was in school, there wasn't a whole lot of it. It wasn't really talked about. And I think I'm sure myself and my friends also felt lonely at that time too. But I don't know if it was dealt with or handled with enough support. And so I'm going to give you some of that support today and some tips. And I'm just going to reassure you that even though you're experiencing so much change right now, it will be okay and it will pass. And I think it's equal parts the transition from one chapter of your life into the next. That's why I want to do an episode on navigating change. Hopefully I get to record that before I go. But it's also because you have a huge shift in your routine. You're not going to school anymore. You're suddenly not going to your classes. You're suddenly not seeing the same teachers, the same friends every day. And so there is that element of change that you are adjusting to as well. And so I'm not too sure what you are doing, whether you're going straight into work or to university, or maybe you're doing a placement or apprenticeship. I don't know. The opportunities and options are endless, but here is what I did that kind of helped me. And hopefully this can help you too. The first thing is to stay in touch with your friends. And I know obviously when you leave school, everyone kind of goes on a different pathway and it can be a little bit hard to navigate that. But for me, I personally struggled so much because when I left school, I was still 17. I finished year 12 when I was 17 years old and I did not turn 18 until the year after we all left in March. And that was really hard for me because a lot of my friends would go out clubbing or would go out partying. I didn't have a fake ID. I didn't even have my license to like go and spend time with them. And so it wasn't until I got my license that I was able to go and catch up with my friends and see them and actually make that effort. And so I recommend doing this because chances are if you're feeling lonely, your friends are also feeling lonely. And when you get together, you can talk about it. You can share that struggle and that will then help you guys work through it and stay connected and move through it together. Because when you share your problems and you get that support, they do feel lighter for you as well. And then my second tip is to lean on family, lean on teachers, and maybe even lean on your school counselor. So I'm not too sure if your school has one, Most schools I feel like should have one, but your family, your teachers can be a great source of support during this time. Even just hearing from people that you trust and respect and can lean on to hear them tell you that it's going to be okay. And I'm telling you now, it's going to be okay. I know it feels scary, but it will be okay. But to hear it from those people in your circle can help you too. They can give you comfort, encouragement, and help you navigate through this really challenging period and offer just guidance and maybe even some resources to you to help you navigate that. 
And then my last tip is to practice self-care. So I'm not sure what you're doing for self-care right now, but make sure you're prioritizing looking after yourself, whether it is doing things for fun or doing things for joy, but self-soothing yourself in a healthy way. And there's a podcast episode I did. It was like how to handle a bad day. It was like maybe episode four, one of the very first ones. There's lots of tips and tricks in there for when you're just like feeling low vibe and not feeling very good that you can go back and listen to. But really try to pursue things that make you happy, bring you joy. Maybe there's hobbies that you want to do. Maybe you want to prioritize doing something with friends or something for yourself. I'm also a huge advocate for anything mindful, whether it's journaling, breathing, taking in a moment to like indulge your senses. Again, maybe listen to the main character energy episode as well. But you need to really make sure you're taking care of yourself physically, emotionally, and mentally. And sometimes this self-care can even be as basic as nailing the basics, right? Whether that's sleep, hydration, movement, making sure you're eating enough, making sure you're eating a variety of foods, making sure you are just looking after yourself in every aspect because that can also alleviate any or some of that stress that you might be experiencing right now as well. And then lastly, please take a deep breath and just know it will be okay. You have so much of your life ahead of you and I know it might feel a bit scary and overwhelming right now, but there are so many things coming that are amazing and you will transition out of this and come out the other side and you will feel that relief and think, oh my gosh, I stressed over this and now I'm here and you'll be able to one day look back and realize that you were just adjusting during that transition period. And so I'm not sure what's next, whether it's uni, traveling, work, but but good luck with whatever it is that you're planning. I'm sending you so much love. Your next chapter is going to be amazing, I promise. And with time, you will move through it. Good luck. We're thinking of you. And we will jump into our last question of the show. Can you please talk about the puppy blues? And I definitely can. I did mention this in some older episodes because of a post in the Facebook group. And then I had a question come up about it last night in the AMA before I recorded this. And so I Let's add it in because I wanted to talk about it and it's something I experienced as well when I got Franklin and I'm not too sure if I've spoken about it at length, but whenever anyone asks me for advice on like getting a dog or what they need to know, I always tell them how hard the puppy stage is. Like it is no joke and the puppy blues are very common. I also think if you looked at Franklin now, you wouldn't know it. Like you wouldn't know that I experienced that with him. And obviously for those listening who don't know what the puppy blues are, essentially it is any feelings of sadness, anxiety, or overwhelm when a person gets a new puppy. It is very similar to postpartum blues experienced by new parents. Obviously it's not the same because having a puppy and having a baby is very different. I'm not saying they're the same. I'm saying it's similar, but Essentially, the puppy blues acknowledges this feeling that exists and does validate that emotional challenge or that emotional uncomfortability that comes along when you get a puppy. And as I said, I had it with Franklin and it was so hard for me because when I got him, I was, had I turned 25? I had just turned 25 and I was living by myself at the time. I was so underprepared. I had no idea just how hard it would be. And he cried nonstop for three weeks. I did not sleep literally for three weeks. And it just started to really chip away and like get to me. And I remember it was probably like that two and a half week mark I had had him. My neighbors were complaining about him crying. I hadn't slept properly. Work was really stressful. I had no support. And I called my mom and I was hysterical and I was bawling my eyes out. And I was like, what have I done? I've made a mistake. I said, I, I cannot believe I've got this dog. Like I love him. And I feel, I felt terrible for feeling this way about him. Like I judged myself so harshly, but I was hysterical crying to my mom telling her I've made a mistake. And she really calmed me down and she's like, it's okay. This is the puppy stage. I always told you how hard it was. Now, you know, and she just gave me some reassurance that it would get better. And then I did some things to alleviate that, which I'll share in a second. But don't get me wrong. I think I loved him so much, but at the same time, I just felt like I was letting him down. I felt so disappointed with myself. I felt like I was failing at this thing of like being a dog mom. And I just felt shit that like I wasn't sleeping and I couldn't get him to settle. And so it was a really, really difficult period. And good news is the puppy blues don't last forever. The puppy stage does 
eventually stop, thank God. But yeah, this is what I did to work through it. And hopefully I can give you some support and advice as well. Now, the first thing to do is to give yourself an adjustment period and also prepare for this. So it's quite hard having a puppy in the house, especially when it comes to sleeping through the night, especially when it comes to toilet training, any barking. Also the fact that you've just taken this puppy away from its mum and away from where it was, which was, it was comfortable. It was a familiar environment. And then you've put it into this new house, this new home with new smells. It does take time for the dog to actually settle. And it does take time to build the puppy's routine and to build the puppy's lifestyle. They also need constant attention. Like I cannot stress that enough. When people ask me, what do I need to know about getting a dog? Like be prepared, do your research on the breed before you get it. Be prepared to train them, be prepared to give them that attention and be prepared to give them that care, especially in that adjustment period. Obviously that adjustment period is for you as well because you need to give yourself grace because it does take time to build this routine up, to build these habits up and It's also quite normal to feel this. And so if anyone else has felt this or you're feeling it right now for your new puppy and you're feeling terrible about it, don't feel terrible about it because it is so normal to feel overwhelmed at first, especially if you've never raised a puppy before. And I think once you do start to establish those routines, that does alleviate some of that pressure and you are able to get into a better flow. The next tip I have is to get support and get help. Now, whether this is puppy school or a dog trainer, Someone professional in the industry to help you out is going to help you so much. So I did take Franklin to puppy school. I also had a dog trainer come to our house. This was at like the three week mark because he had not stopped crying. And I called her and I said, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm a shit dog mom. Like you have to help me. And she came and she basically taught him, but she taught me too, because she said to me that every time that he cried, Well, she asked us to reenact what was happening. And basically every time he cried, I would tend to him and I would go and soothe him. And she's like, you can't do that because when he cries now, he knows that it means mum's coming. And so she goes, you have to ignore it. She's like, you have to give him enrichment firstly, train him in other ways, mentally exhaust him. Cause at this point, I don't think I could walk him yet. He hadn't had all these injections. And she's like, so you have to mentally stimulate him, give him enrichment and also like distract him from noticing your absence. And she was amazing because she taught me how to crate train him. She taught me how to get his behavior into line and thank God for her. Because if it wasn't, I just would have had no way forward. And it gave me peace of mind. And then she also recommended I take him to puppy school, which was really good for his socialization. Again, taught me the basics, how to sit, stay, you know, leave it, come, walk on the lead, all that stuff. And so I highly, highly recommend that as well if you haven't already. The next tip I have is to make sure that you are sleeping. Sleep deprivation is no joke. And it's really hard, I think, to do it by yourself. So if you have a partner or you're living with a housemate or friends or you're getting the dog with with somebody else, you can share that responsibility and share that sleep, but it is so important to make sure you are still prioritizing that even with a new puppy. What I used to do once we had the crying down pat is I would set my alarm every two or three hours. So I would wake up before Franklin to take him to the potty because he couldn't obviously hold his wheeze. He's a puppy. And that's why I love crate training, which I'll do another topic on down the track, not today, but A dog will typically not want to soil the crate and not want to wean the crate, but they also can't hold their wheeze while they're a puppy. So you have to take them out to the bathroom. And so I would wake up before he would to take him and then I'd put him back in the crate. And I was having a broken sleep, but at that point I was still sleeping. So see if you can figure out a way to still get some sleep in while you're navigating this adjustment period. And then I did just mention it, but any help that you can get from a partner, family, dog trainers is important. Lean on it. It's very normal to experience what you're going through, but don't be afraid to get that help as well. And then my last tip is to just be patient and know that with consistency and continuing to train your puppy and show them good habits that you will make it through this period because I can't remember now how long it was until Franklin kind of snapped out of it and became like a better puppy for me or until my puppy blues went away but it really does go away and you will be able to move through it and then get back to that place where you can just enjoy your puppy and enjoy this new chapter of your lives together 
good luck. I know it can be really hard and I hope you know and maybe you can see now just how good of a dog Franklin is for me. And he's five years old now, so it's been a long time since the puppy stage and the puppy blues that I experienced. And I think to myself now, like I would never, ever, I was never, ever not going to have that dog. Even when I called my mum crying, I knew that we would ride it out, but it really was just about knowing that the light at the end of the tunnel would come back and to also just lean on the people around you for support. The last thing I'll say though is if you are really severely struggling with this, speak to your GP, speak to someone professional in the mental health support space because you don't have to ever fight any of these like puppy blues, even postpartum blues, any kind of blues by yourself. All right, guys, we're going to wrap the show there. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't, please leave us a review on Apple or a rating on Spotify. I love seeing your feedback for the show. Don't be shy. Give us five stars. Post us on your story as well while you're listening. And if you haven't, follow us on Instagram, Your Safe Space Pod. Giveaways will be back when season two is back. And join our Facebook group, Your Safe Space Podcast Community. I will see you guys next time. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.